So I'm gonna start here. Um, so for so Cypress uh, is a Java. It's a, actually a JavaScript. It's a JavaScript testing package that lets you do end-to-end -end, like browser integration testing. And so you can use it in any package, and you can use it totally separate. I know a lot of places that place I work, we use, um, I don't think we use Cypress, we use browser testing and we have a totally separate like um, test repository that's completely separate from like the actual code base for the projects. Um, because all you need to do is it just opens up a browser, opens up your site and starts running it. So it's like totally separate from um, the rest of your code. Um, and in Laravel, I like to use this Laravel and plus Cypress integration. Um, it's actually created by Laracasts. So if you've used, if you've watched any of their videos, it's a really nice package created by Jeffrey. Um, and they have an entire course on it, which is where I get most of my, which is where I learned most of my, what I know about Cypress is from the Laracasts um, course on it. Um, so if you want to dig more into it, they have that course um, on their site. But so what end-to-end -end browser testing is, it just basically it opens up a browser, follows some steps, and just goes along and then it, it can assert some different stuff. If you've ever used um, Dusk or if you've used PHP units, assert can assert some HTML. This is like asserting that your page has some HTML to the max. Um, so installation is pretty easy. You require this package, and then you also have to install Cypress. Like I said, it's, uh, it's JavaScript, so you actually require it with NPM. And then this package provides some boilerplate code, which we'll take a look at in a second here. Um, so it includes the boilerplate code, and then you just tell it where the base URL for your app is. So usually you'll install this, um, since you're using a Laravel package, you'll install this right into your Laravel project. Um, so this will usually be something like localhost, or you know, if you're using Laravel Valet, it might have a .test your domain, or you might have like a dedicated one. Um, but this could point anywhere, it'll just open up that URL. And then, so we'll take a look at the boilerplate code here. So when you run the boilerplate code, you'll get this Cypress directory. Um, and this Cypress directory has a couple of things in it. So it has some fixtures, um, which I won't be covering because I don't know too much about them. Um, says there's a way to mock data. So if you're calling like an external API or something else, you could mock the data instead. Um, so you don't have to actually reach out to like an external API, like a Google Maps API or Stripe API if you're using something that isn't actually part of your project. Um, you can have some plugins. Um, so by default, it comes with one to swap the environment variables. Um, so this will just take your environment and swap it out with something else. So you can have, I have like an environment and then I also have an environment Cypress, which can have like a test database name in it um, so that you can use a separate test database from your, from like your actual development database. So you don't overwrite any data or anything like that. And then the main thing that comes with is a few extra, these support here. So it comes with one that you can assert redirect. So if you've ever used like PHP unit, you can assert that you get a redirect response. This does something similar. So that comes out of the box. You can write custom commands. So in Cypress, you can add in, if you have something you do a lot, like maybe you have a specific way that you want to log users, that you log into the site. You don't want to have to write the code to like log in. So you could create a command in here. And then you can use the commands anywhere in your test suite instead of having to, um, you know, enter in all of the login code. So you can write anything you want in here, it's just JavaScript. Um, this is just a loading file. Uh, so there's not too much in there out of the box. And then there's a couple of Laravel commands in here, which give you most, this is where most of the benefits of the package come in. Um, and it comes with a default login. And what, it, what this does is the Laravel package provides extra routes at this underscore underscore Cypress page um, that are only available when you're in a test environment. So you won't be able to access these on when you're doing development or in production. They're only available when your test suite is running. And they just provide some extra ways 
to like, so in this case, it logs in without having to actually log in, just you pass it in some info and it gives you a to login token so that you can reach authenticated endpoints easier. Um, and I'll, we'll see how, how do you can use this in a minute here. It comes with logout version, it comes with a way to get a CSRF token. And then if you've you done testing in Laravel, you know that you can usually have, you can usually use factories to generate if you need models for your tests. So if your test relies on there being a, you know, some records in the database, since, the, since Cypress is JavaScript, you don't have access to all of those PHP factories or any other ways to create models. So the, the Laravel Cypress package provides a way, they provide this command here that allows you to create models. So we'll see in a little bit here, you'll pass in what model you wanna create and some info about it, basically to give you that factory method. And I mean, that's just what it calls here is it calls a factory. So you can create models in your database easier. Um, which is always usually, which is usually pretty tricky uh, if you're doing Cypress without this package. <clears throat> and then there's a few more, so like refresh the database. Um, like I said, a lot of these are very similar if you've used PHP unit in Laravel because um, they're modeled after that. So this will just take all the data out of your database and run the migrations again so you're starting fresh. Uh, if you have some, if you have a database seeder class, you can run those in to fill in some data. Um, you can even run any artisan command if you want in your test suite. You, know, you have an artisan command that sets up an environment, sets up some data or whatever, or just that runs some, some code you need to run in your test suite. Um, and then they have, finally, if you really need to do whatever you want, they do have a way to run PHP from within the Cypress test suite. They recommend not using this because it kind of makes your test suite tied pretty closely to your code generally, um, which is something you probably want to avoid if you're doing an end-to-end -end integration test because usually it's intended to replicate what the user using the browser would be doing and the user you know, when they're using a site probably isn't allowed to execute arbitrary PHP on your server. Um, but if you do need to do something to set up that you can't do with a factory or whatever, you can run that. So that's most of the PHP. That's pretty much what the PHP stuff or the Laravel specific stuff is. Um, so the rest of this will just be um, what you could do with like a regular Cypress test suite, um, assuming that all these commands were defined by yourself. They're just provided by that Laravel package. Um, but so then this is what a test suite looks like. Um, they're here in this integration directory. Um, and they look pretty similar to um, other JavaScript test suites or you know, how you'd expect. CY is short for Cypress. It's just the testing object. So you can see in here, I'm describing activity and this is just a way to group a bunch of tests together. So they're all nested under here. Um, and then before, um, they have like before, before each, after, after each. So in this case, before I start running all of these activity tests, I want to refresh the database. So I'm starting with some clear data. And then all of these it functions are the tests that we'll be running. So I have a quick one here to make sure that the, in the activity, if you visit the slash activity page, you get redirected to the home page. If you're not log, if you're logged out, um, so you see it reads pretty pretty easily. I mean, you know, if you look at this, you can tell that if you visit activity, you get redirected to home when you're not logged in. Um, and then down here, I have all of the other tests. So let me quickly show you what this site, what this page kind of looks like. Um, so here's the page. We'll hide this for a second because that's the testing suite. So all it does is it shows you some activity on some credit card type info. So you have like on September 16th, this card had some info happen on September 15th. So it's just basically a table with some data and you have to be logged in to see the page. So here we should display no activity when there's only activity for a different account. Um, so the first thing we do here, we're using one of those login commands. 
um, and we want to log in as somebody that has a merchant number, just ones. And then here's where we use those creates. These are like those factories. So I'm creating a merchant account and I'm giving a card. You see, so this is a different merchant and a different mark card for the different merchant. And then here I'm actually using the PHP because I didn't bother to set up a factory for the activity. Um, so I'm just inserting this. This is um, a P this is one of the Laravel DB um, facades, just to insert some data into the database. And then, um, because this PHP call is asynchronous, I have a callback where after that I visit activity, and then I will show you what a get a data CY is. Um, I'm just saying that it should contain no activity today. If there was no, if there's no activity, then there should see no activity today. You see, if we actually visit the site and go back a little ways, you go to a day that doesn't have any info. See here, no activity today. So it just checks that when there's no activity, it sees that there's no activity today shown on the screen. Um, all these tests pretty much do the same thing. They put some data into the database. And then in this case, I visit the activity and I should see some info. And then they're pretty, so it's pretty readable. Um, let me quickly pull up the, I thought I had it open, but I must have closed it. And data CY. So I have added onto some elements a data dash CY. And then, so in this case, I've set this one to previous day. So this is just an arbitrary helper. I couldn't name this whatever, but I wanted. But Cypress usually recommends using data CY. Um, and I get previous day. So in here, can see that I'm doing get data CY previous day. Um, and that's just a way to make sure that I know that I'm grabbing that element specifically um, and not something else. Because you, you could use this to, let me look and see what this element also looks like. So you see this is a A, an A element. So I could have used, for example, like CY get a, you can use like any selector, but obviously my page has a lot of a, a links on it. So this would not be very specific. So I'd have to go in and add some more like class selectors or an ID or something. So it, they recommend just adding in data CY. You know that it won't be like that attribute isn't used for anything else. It's unique to the element. Um, so that's what these like gets all over the place. They're just like a regular JavaScript um, element selector. And then I'm making like little assertions on it. So I'm getting, in this case, I'm getting the table. And you see that I have, well, it's in a different element, but <clears throat> the table has a data CY on it that's equal to table. And then I'm just asserting that it, in this case, it should not contain that, but it should contain activate. Um, so let me see if. I can, and then, so once you have all of your tests written, let me open this back up again, you'll run a little command. So npx, um, you could also use, you could also create an, in your package JSON, like a script to run this. Um, I just use npx, which is the npm's execute function to run npx cypress open. And then it'll be a little bit slow because my site is running within Docker and I'm also running this Zoom call. Um, so this opens up this page and this is your Cypress browser. This is just a Chrome instance with some extra stuff added into it. You can see these are all of the tests that I have. So we'll open up the activity spec. This will open up browser and then it's hiding the sidebar. Where did it go? There it is. So now you can see it's running. This will take a little while because, like I said, it's a little bit slow. It's doing this first test, so it's checking that it should redirect to login when not logged in. And then it'll move on at some point, and it'll check. And you can see here, 
you get to see the browser opening. So right now it's trying, it's trying to load the activity page. Let's get through here. So this is the one down, yeah. So the one downside to Cypress is that it is a lot slower because it's actually opening up a browser and it's hitting your server and it has to load everything. So here you can see that it opened. Can't look at it right now, but you can see it shows you all of the steps that it took. So it ran migrate fresh and it ran log out and then it visited activity and it got redirected to just slash and then it asserted that it was on the home page. Here you can see that's logging in, creating a merchant object, creating a card object, and then it's running some PHP because I was lazy, and it's visiting activity, it's getting the table, and then it's asserting that it sees no activity today. This last one here. Logging in. So I do recommend, so I definitely recommend that if you're doing testing, it's good to have PHP unit type testing, which runs a lot faster. And then just running end-to-end -end testing like this, once you're ready to like make sure that everything still works. But I'm a, I'm a big fan of the of the end-to-end -end testing because it ends up ensuring that your site works for the user, not just that your code works when you call it in certain ways from your test suite. Um, and I think one of the neat things with that with um, Cypress is that if you do have a test that failed for some reason, you can go over and you can hover your mouse over any of these steps and you'll actually see what the website looked like at that point. So you can see here before this, it was just on the default page and then it visited activity and then it highlights the element that it's selected. So if you're selecting the wrong element for some reason, you can see, you can kind of figure out why. Um, and then, so, and then same thing over here. There's activity, grabs the table, and then it's asserting that it sees, and you goes, it goes and it, you can see that it grabs that link. It clicks on it, loads a new page, and then you can see, so, so there's, two rows and it goes to the previous page and then there's one row and then it checks, it grabs the forward button again, clicks that and you can see we're back on that first page where it makes sure that we're on that page. Um, so it's really nice and it's really easy to see exactly what the test suite is doing. It makes it a lot easier to debug any issues um, if you run into any. Um, I'm not going to run all of these because as you saw, it takes a, quite a while, but yeah. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's a really nice um, experience working through it um, and using it because it just is a really nice interface and it's kind of nice to be able to, to see your tests actually running instead of like in PHP unit, you get a little dot output and then it tells you if it worked or not. You actually get to like inspect and view it and to watch it progress. Um, so, um, yeah. So I didn't really have too much. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, especially if you've used a test suite before. Um, but I think it's really neat to use it to see the browser actually open it up and run it and see that it goes through everything, um, making sure yeah everything works.